let's say you got your first pack of Pokemon cards, or maybe you got your 10th, who knows, maybe even your 50th, but you did it. You finally did it. You pulled your first alt art. What are you going to do with it? You can't just leave it out like this. You gotta protect it. She calls well, me let's find out what we can do to keep your cards safe. <laughs> I like Penny Sleep. I love having Penny Sleeves by Ultra Pro. They don't have to be the Ultra Pro brand. This is just my personal preference. I have them with me everywhere I go. I have them in my wallet. I have them in my bag if I go into my local card shop and conventions. Anywhere that's going to be selling Pokemon cards, I'm going to have these with me. I can pull them apart with a simple motion, move a card right on in, and it's going to be safe from any sort of surface scratches. Now, if I want to protect my card from creases or bends, that's whenever I can go on to our next level of protection, the top loader. It takes a little bit more practice to move it into a top loader, but then it's going to be a whole lot safer than it was before. For me, whenever it comes to top loaders, there's too much bend in them. For a card that's over $50 in value, this is just too much for me to worry about. It's not rigid enough. This is too much play for me to be concerned about for a high value card. I don't want to be trusting something this flimsy for high value. So what can we possibly do with it? Let's find out. Now, Ultra Pro makes these really great magnetic cases that are one of my personal favorites. They're very sturdy. They don't bend. They're easy to use. The cards fit flush inside of them, so they're not going to be sliding around. They're not going to be bumping against anything. The only downside that they have is that they're really easy to open, so the card can easily come right back out. So that's not going to be great if I'm trying to seal the card and ensure it's not going to be damaged in the future. This is a great in-between for its next destination, the slab. So what exactly is the slab? Slab. slab is a graded card. So what's a graded card? A graded card is a card that we send to a company that rates the card on a scale 1 through 10 based upon various factors such as the centering of the card, the quality of its surface, any whitening on the edges, and various factors puts it together to create There's various benefits to having your card graded, such as increasing the value of the card based upon your score. And my personal favorite is ensuring the quality is not going to budge. I mean, sure, you can always send it in to another company, send it in for regrading if you don't like the number that you've got. But I personally like the protection that comes with having the card graded. I live in an area that is prone to hurricanes, so if there's ever any damage to my house and the area gets flooded, I can know that my cards are going to be safe from water damage. So now that my collection is starting to grow, what do I start to do with all of these cards? I can't just leave them out everywhere. It's going to start making a mess. I'm going to have to start organizing this and developing some sort of process to my collection. Well, let's try and figure something out going forward to make it a bit more easier. The binder is always a go-to option. You wanna try and get one that has a zipper and preferably is designed for trading cards. Now the only drawback is you're limited into how many cards you can put into a binder. That's why binders are best for a select few cards that you want to highlight in your collection. Mine specifically, I try to keep it for alt arts, full arts, illustrator rares, in my specific Pokemon collection, such as Raikou, Persian, Meowth, any specific highlighted Pokemon that I like, or cards I want to share with other people and just easily show it, maybe I want to sell it, things of that nature. Collector tins such as these are always great. I use this one specifically for holding cards that I intend to get graded. If they're not on display or if I don't ever want to set it out somewhere where I can risk them getting damaged, I can put them inside the tins. Any extra bolt cards I can also put in other tins if I pack them in a specific way. We'll ensure they're not sliding around and getting extra scratches on them. The trainer boxes have a bit of a paywall to them. I know they're expensive, but they are great for storing cards in them. They're shaped perfectly for it and you can hold quite a few cards inside of them once you take out all the extra items. 
you're going to have extra space from the cards that come with them. So you're going to be able to hold a whole bunch of extra bulk cards inside. You can also go for the tried and true repurpose of box. I got this one specifically from the mail. And I use it to organize specific packs that I have. Now you may have noticed this over here, but I do play the trading card game on top of collecting cards. So whenever I buy a booster box, I like to try and keep it on hand. Just so that way I can have the cards available to look through whenever I'm building a deck. I like to organize them preferably by type, trainers, energies, try and keep them all together into a nice little pack that I can have on hand. And that should be all the basics that you need to start organizing your collection, little bits of advice, so that way you can get it all nice and tight. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoy this.